Somewhere over the rainbow You will find Copic markers abounding In cringy YouTube intros that don't rhyme Wait, rhyme rhymes with fine I, It does rhyme, but I said it doesn't I created a paradox G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and today I thought I'd have a bit of fun with every colour of the rainbow, which sounds like a lot, but in reality it's red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet. Anyways, uh, I decided that I would take my whole Kerbic Market collection and pick out one of each of those colours. As you can tell, there are a few different reds and blues and greens and stuff, but I wanted to see if I could use them in conjunction with each other and in a piece as a whole to create something that looks cool. So first things first, let's start off with red. This is uh, cadmium red. That's pretty red, but we could go a little, I don't know, higher intensity with the lipstick red. And we have crimson, which looks, I mean, to the untrained eye, they all look exactly the same. <laughs> so let's stick with cadmium red. Moving on to orange, there are definitely different hues of orange that we could pick from here. So here's just a few. Let's try these out in the context of the red that we've drawn, so that's sort of a mid-tone. This one sort of has a slight pink hue to it. This one has a, I don't know, more of a caramel look to it. And then we have a very bold orange, much closer to the red. Here's a cadmium orange. Ooh, a cadmium orange and cadmium red. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is, this is ver vermilion. No, that's like brown. Oh, come on. I mean, I guess, I guess the safe thing to do would be to go with the cadmium orange. We have cadmium red and cadmium orange. My next question is, do I have a cadmium? Oh, I, I do. I have a cadmium yellow. For God's sake, maybe we should just call this the cadmium art challenge. I don't know. That looks a bit too cadmium for me. <laughs> what else have we got? We've got lemon yellow. It's a bit lemony. We have golden yellow. This is actually my favorite yellow Copic marker color, but I wonder if it's too strong because in an artwork I create, yellow is the lightest tone I have to work with, which can get a nice and light value. Uh, this is buttercup. That's, I actually feel like I might go with lemon. Lemon yellow was uh, this one in here, uh, just because it's a little lighter than the, than the other ones, but it's still nice and solid. So I'm gonna go with my lemon yellow. Maybe this should just be part one of two. Maybe this whole video should just be me picking colors. All right, where's my cadmium blue? What? I don't have a cadmium blue, but I have phthalo blue. <laughs> Let's try the phthalo blue. Yeah, look, that's a bit too, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 it's lacking. Smoky blue. Mmm, smoky. Uh, that was sky blue again. I don't know. I feel like we could get punchier with blue. Lapis lazuli. What do we got here? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's uh, pretty punchy. But if they're all the same, value it's going to be hard to create contrast all right let's go with the punchy blue this uh this uh what is it lapis lazuli so we'll go with that one and then with green let's go with something more subtle this looks this looks kind of nice this one's called mignonette and i think i've used this for a uh, more subtle work yeah that's quite nice and if i put that next to the blue it's obviously not quite the green of a rainbow but the point of this challenge is to pick one of each color not specifically to tonally match the values of a rainbow exactly so calm your farm, I'm still obeying the rules of this challenge which I have invented and am doing myself. So back off! Who'd have thought this would be so difficult? It's difficult because I don't actually know what I'm going to create. So really, <laughs> what I create may well eventuate from the colors I pick, or most likely will. So I guess that's why I'm sort of weighing up which values and saturations to go with. That last one I just put down, I think it was that it dried lighter so just give it a second it seems to be pretty nice not too obnoxious and it's called I think it's French it's French for geez your fingers look fat holding that in my video screen right now the French are very picky about their 
finger proportions. All right, blue, green, we're left with only indigo and violet. And I literally have to Google what they look like again. <laughs> indigo, basically purple from what I can see. If we're going with that, let's, uh, there we go. Look at that, nice dark purple. That could be like our shadow color. So that's cool. We've got indigo and then violet is sort of like a piss water purple. <laughs> it's just, you know, like a, oh wait, wait. It's this, this is violet. Looks an awful lot like purple. Let's go with a lighter color. Oh, that's quite nice. That's quite good. There we go. Okay, that's our violet. Bam! We have a rainbow. In fact, let's uh, let's let's give this let's take this baby out for a spin, shall we? We there we go. Yep. Orange, yep, very nice. Oh, we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a yellow, green, and then we have blue, blue, indigo. Apparently, there's a gap. My OCD is anger. <laughs> Violet. There we go. My OCD is more angry because the little gap I tried to fix is now less of a, is more of ruined. There we go. So that's our rainbow. Look, it doesn't look like a traditional rainbow in that the green and the yellow were a little softer and uh, so is the violet, but that's okay because I want to create a sense of contrast and we clearly have a punchy red and orange and blue and purple, which, what, well, sorry, indigo. And I think that's okay because I think if all of the colors were strong, it wouldn't give us uh, enough of an opportunity to create contrast. Now, we've done a lot of planning and preparation. I think it's about time that we uh, take these colors and try and create something cool. Like I said, I actually don't know what I'm going to make. So I'm going to take these colors and go to a sketchbook first, play around with some ideas, see what I can come up with. And then when I move on to my final piece, I will lightly sketch out the thing in pencil and then I'll use some pen and then a uh, brush pen and some fine liners to really bring all the, the stuff together. The tones and the colors of the piece are limited to my rainbow. This is that feeling I get before I start a piece where I hope it turns out okay, but I have no clue if it will, which is my cue to begin. I took some time actually just staring at those colors for a while and deciding which ones stood out the most and which complemented each other and which I could also use more subtly. And there were a few things that immediately came into my mind. One was the idea of using the yellow as a beam of light or perhaps a few beams of light mixed in with the idea of a sunset in the background and foliage in nature. With the idea solidifying in my mind, I thought it'd be time to test it out on paper. So I created a bit of a thumbnail sketch of the composition that came to mind with a deer in the center of a forest with rays of light spread it out on top of it. After sketching and roughing out the composition of the scene, I tried out all of the colors in different combinations in the piece in front of me. Green for the foliage in the foreground and the ground, blue for the deer, which would then stand out against the hotter colors behind it. The golden rays of sunlight beaming through the canopy of the forest and the fiery sunset behind the deer. Conceptually, the trees themselves would also be a warmer color, specifically the purple, with the lighter purple or the violet, I guess, acting as a bit of a rim light on the edge of the trees and then the very dark purple being the shadowy area facing away from the direction of light. My final thumbnail sketch was something I was really happy with. So before moving on to a final piece, I thought I'd sketch a few practice deer since of course all the attention would be going towards it and I wanted to make sure I had a solid silhouette and a confident pose. So next on to my larger piece of paper, a little larger than A4, I went in and first and foremost sketched the deer in the center of the forest and then roughly put in the silhouettes and the outlines of the shapes of the forest surrounding the deer. When I was happy with the sketch of my piece, I cleaned up the image got rid of unnecessary construction and also used the kneadable eraser to roll over some of the darker sketch areas so that the sketch I worked with would be very light and so that I could then just work with the colors on top of it and I wouldn't need to erase the sketch lines later instead they would sort of fold into the background. Moving on to color I started off with the two most important focal points the deer and the rays of light beaming down on it. I thought I'd approach this piece with a little bit of a cutout visual style so not going for too many gradients but trying to create a really nice sharp and silhouetted or shadowed effect. The thicknesses and the positions of the trees were lightly sketched in already so I went through with my orange marker and I filled in the gaps between the trees but not behind the sunbeams. I'd come back to this all later but basically the idea I had was to build this composition piece by piece until eventually I could create a laid effect. But to start off with it would look very two-dimensional. To add a little bit of a glow 
blue and the really hot sunlight behind the forest trees, I went in and created a slight gradient, adding red to the edges of the trees and then blending it back with the orange. I decided to move on to the foreground and come back to the mid and background later once I'd added more of my layers so I could build things up. And it was hard to create a solid color look for the bushes and the grass in the foreground, but I did that by first of all trying to break up the colors and not having a single flat color, but working in the golds and the greens and then eventually some blues mixed in with yellow to create a really dark green, obviously edging towards the blue side because I was limited in my color options. But I actually think this still worked really well, the fact that I had to work with the blues to help solidify and add some punch to the foreground. Also by over blending the forest floor and then coming back when it was dry and sort of stippling in a grass texture with my green marker created a really nice difference between the texture of the bushes in the foreground and the forest floor heading in towards the deer which had a much softer tone overall. Now it's time to move on to the trees. So the first thing I did was create that rim light by putting down that light violet color on the edges and then I went through each of the trees and filled in the middle with a rich dark purple blending with the rim lighting as I went. Now that every part of the image had been laid down in at least a rough form it was time to go through and create some of the layered effects. First of all into the beams of light putting in some of my orange and then blending with the yellow to make the beam look more transparent. Then going into areas of the image to add solidity like adding purple to the blues of the deer to create a deeper shadow in the darker areas and then going in with my orange to fine tune and sharpen the edges of the beams of light. As a finishing touch I go into the deer and add a hint of gold to the surface and a little bit of a gradient just behind the deer so he stands out from the colors behind him. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of my rainbow colour challenge with every colour, or at least the seven colours of the rainbow. Now if you love this piece, it is available in a print as of now, so go check it out with the link in the card and in the description where you can see this and a whole bunch of my other artworks from challenges, character design sessions and let's draws. So go check out my artwork, any and all support is of course a, a huge help to me in this channel. I really like how this piece comes together and the fact that it doesn't end up looking like a garish rainbow. The fact that there are some weaker colours and stronger colours I think works really well to its advantage. And it makes me curious as to what sort of piece might eventuate if the say blue and purple were weak and the gold and green were really vivid or neon, you know? I don't know, maybe have fun with that yourself and see what you can come up with. Um, by the way, before I settled on this video being a rainbow drawing challenge, I was actually going to do just a, a marker only art challenge without a colour limitation, but I decided to go with the rainbow challenge for two reasons. The first, because I liked the thematic colour limitations and the way that would make me create around that theme, but secondly, because I just realized that today, the day I'm recording this video, is actually the first full day in Australia where marriage equality is a thing, which I am really happy about. Now while I don't usually get political on this channel, and I don't mean this to spark any sort of debate, I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate those who now have equal standing in the eyes of the law when it comes to marriage law in Australia, and of course my thanks to people who also stepped up to vote for that to be a thing. I think in wrapping up, it'd be nice to just stop and acknowledge that the world is made up of all kinds of people and when we welcome and accept and love each other's differences that is when we can start to see the tapestry that comes about from all of the individuals that make it and we see that we are all part of one big beautiful goddamn rainbow. Thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being a part of this community and until next time I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.